What's up guys, Joe here. Welcome back to my channel and today we are back with more Uno X episode, I think 16, 17 actually, if I'm not mistaken. And we have today some big races, including a monument. That is right, I'm actually yet to play the final stage of Volta Catalunya, which is weird because you should have already seen the end of that stage in the previous episode. Editing is a crazy thing, but we do start today with Gent Wevelgem, we have Dwarves Door Vlaanderen, and we also have the Ronda van Vlaanderen, our first Ronda to finish off today's episode should be a massive one. So you can see by the planning, I have got the same team for all three Belgian races, led by Magnus Court and Marcus Ullegaard. Rasmus Tiller has been drafted into the team as well, so hopefully we should have all of our big cobbled riders. And as we enter against Wevel game, you can see our full squad right here, which we will have throughout today's episode. But of course, the big favourites, Wout van Aert, Kasper Askren, Jasper Stuyven, the list goes on. Jonas Widerberg is always in the breakaway at the Cobble Classics. That doesn't change here today. You can see his comrades. So 70k to go. We are still up front in the breakaway. The Peloton are chasing though. And you can see only 47 riders in this group. The tempo is on. We need to stay well and truly in position. You can see some of the riders that have been dropped. It seems all of the favourites really are still to the front. Oh, and not the time to puncture four nils, pull it, and not the time to fall for Anders Garza, who falls all by himself. I doubt he is getting back in, or back to the front of the race at least. Oh my word, now Wiedemann crashes. I literally just tried to attack from the rest of the breakaway. Hopefully he can get up in time to stay with the peloton. He just about does that unbelievable stuff. Now we have just five riders at the front. And so the pace has stopped a little bit in the peloton. Martin Lass is to the front. So I'm going to put in a little dig here with Rasmus Tiller. We catch the remnants of the breakaway. Hopefully we can find our way through. And we do. Rasmus Tiller is now at the front of Gent Wevel Gem. Still, we have 48k to go, but lots of hills, hopefully, to extend this lead. And so now Ineos Grenadiers are to the front. Only 40 riders again are in the chasing group. Tiller can grab some water and hopefully we can hang on for as long as possible. Let's give the Norwegian champion a chance. And of course, this is a very unlikely move to come off for Tiller. He's tiring already 30k to go now as we approach the Kemmelberg for another occasion. But it does mean we don't need to do any work in the group behind the likes of Quickstep. They need to use the likes of Eve Lampert on the fronts. And now we're seeing riders attack up to Rasmus Tiller. We're probably going to sit on these guys. I don't think I'm going to work with them. And I think the best tactic probably is just to try and set up Magnus Court for a sprint. And you know what? Rather than dragging the likes of Van Poppel and Laporte back in, could I maybe just try and bridge this gap with Magnus Court, Hofstetter and Laporte? They are going to try and follow. Let's make it a slightly bigger attack for Magnus Court. Make sure we do get back on to Clay's Stuyven as well. And is this group going to go now? I'm not sure. Or maybe I should try and bridge with Hulgard, follow Beestrom to the front of the race. But maybe this group of 15 have gone. And so we are going to now have to follow the wheels with Magnus Court. I think the group with Hulgard in are probably not going to get back on right now. I'm not going to do the chasing myself. Of course, we're just going to follow the likes of Sagan at the front. And that is what we're doing for now. I think this is probably the best tactic rather than trying to get our teammates back in. And so I'm going to follow Wout van Aert. He led us to victory, of course, at Omli Petnusblad in a previous episode. And really this gap behind is not going to be closed at all as Kasper Askren attacks only 4k to go right now we need to be very aware we have Van Bala in the group Moscon as well Laporte I think Van Aert is probably the wheel we want we're going to do our best to stay there and we're there right now Askren doesn't quite have a big enough gap it's a, almost a replay of Omni Pet Newsblad right here but Gianni Moscon this time trying to catch Kasper Askren we're still on Wout Van Aert's wheel into the final kilometer under the flam rouge let's go for the line do we have the space to come around we don't have the speed I'm afraid this time I went too late and Wout van Aert is going to win in Wevel again. We're going to get a sixth place today. Oh, I just went too late there in the sprints. Uh, maybe I should have kept Hulegaard there, but to be honest, I think I just went too late in the sprint. I was addicted to trying to stay in Van Aert's slipstream, and we're never going to beat him when he times his sprint like that. Even with that great day, sixth, probably the best we could have done. And next up, we do actually have our first objective in a little while. Top five at Dwarves at Dwarf Lander, and can we go and get it? Same team like I mentioned, and today it's Peter Sagan starting as the favourite. A little drop down from the start list of Gent Wevel Gem, and hopefully that top five is on the cards. Oh my word, I've had so many graphical issues, guys. I cannot even tell you, but finally we are underway at Dwarves Dwarf Lander, and not quite sure what is going on with my PCM. Let's try our luck and try and get Rasmus Tiller in today's breakaway. I'm not sure he'll be allowed, but if we can get him up the road would be perfect. 
And to my surprise, we are allowed. Rasmus Tiller is up the road in today's breakaway. We have Labadi here with us, I think probably a new gen. Kevin Razor is here as well. And Rasmus Tiller, by far the strongest rider of that group. So we're down to 60k to go. Tiller still up the road. We haven't had any attacks really from the main peloton. And to be honest, we are getting quite close to the line. Tiller, if we can get these guys working with us, could play a key role today. The kilometers are ticking by right now. It's not the most kind of selective version of Dwarves Door Vlander, and we don't have a plethora of climbs and of course cobbled sectors as well uh, which does mean everyone is still looking pretty good and in our team and I do think we'll have quite a lot of riders probably sprinting for victory so we have 21 riders at the front of the race and you know what I don't think Teller is going to be able to hold on I am going to put some riders to the front to really try and set a rhythm Videberg is caught behind we can do without him because we have so many good riders Laporte is behind I'm sure these guys will come back on the group behind them though may struggle more and this is the group we definitely want to keep behind as well as of course these guys if we can so we're down to 39 riders actually. It has been quite selective. Tiller still at the front with Labadi. I haven't really been working. Um, I quickly changed my mind. We have Sam Bennett and the like in this group. We're not going to pull him to victory instead. We're just going to try and follow for the moment whilst Tiller is up the roads. And so Tiller is going to be the final rider caught from today's breakaway. And as he is caught, I think we need to try and change tactic just a little bit and maybe try and launch some attacks up the roads. So 14k to go in towards Dorf and we still have. 28 riders Bennett is here Sagan is here we're not going to win if we take these guys to the line we definitely need to try something and here we go then 10k to go Peter Sagan is launching some attacks we have Van Moa as well trying to launch something let's try and follow with our main riders hopefully we can get away with a smaller group Dylan Grunewagen is still here how is he still in this group 10 riders off the front but again comes back together so let's slow it up briefly we are about to hit some cobbles and I think let's try and attack with Marcus Hulagard right now. He can get in Sam Bennett's wheel. Can Magnus Court Nielsen, Eve Lampert maybe. Let's try and get away with Marcus Hulagard. We're probably not going to go to the line. We have to give it a go though, surely. Oh, and look at this. Magnus Court is following Lampert. We have Sagan behind. Pickcock as well. Oh my word, this is a perfect scenario. Perfect scenario. Let's get Magnus Court in Hulagard's wheel. We have six riders off the front and only 3k to go. Moscon is here. Sagan is here. Lampert. Pickcock. A few more coming back on. Sam Bennett is back on as well, but I think he's going to be a little bit tired as he. Hulagard is tired as well, though, coming into the final kilometre of Towards Dorf Landren. Can we sprint for victory here with Magnus Court Nielsen? We're Gonna try right now. Sagan is coming. Moscon is coming. Sagan looks so so quick though. But so does Magnus Court Nielsen. And I think we are going to take victory here at Towards Door of London. Let's go, Magnus Court Nielsen. What a man you are. When there's Magnus, there's a way. What a race that was. We attacked at the right time, really, in that finale, and we just about had the positioning. Marcus did the lead out, and Magnus did the finishing job to Peter Sagan of all people. What a sprint that was. And that also was the perfect preparation for the big one today. Ronda von Vlaanderen, the big monuments. Can we maybe, maybe win our first monuments with Uno X? Of course, we didn't have Milan San Remo earlier this season. We missed out on a wild card there. We missed out on all the Italian races for a matter of fact. And could this be our day? Oh my word, guys, what a start to the Ronda. Marcus Soulegard, who's been a domestique really throughout the Belgian Classic so far, working for Magnus Court, gets a plus five day. He's been targeting this race. Like I mentioned, we have Magnus Court focusing more on Paris Roubaix. So uh, that should work out nicely if we can get a plus five there as well with him. But here, Marcus is going to be our man. And to be fair, Magnus Court, he's on a great day as well. And I'm afraid I've tried really hard to get a rider in the breakaway. We're just not allowed. We've missed the move. Five riders are up the road instead. Would have been very, very helpful to have a rider in this group. Here we go then. Duronda starts here. We head to the Odoquamont for the first time, I think, of three ascents of the famous climb here in Belgium, of course. So uh, this is really going to decide the race. Not on this occasion, but this is going to be a crucial stage in the race later on as Alaphilippe 
already relaying on the front for his teammates. PCM, what are you doing? So about 106k to go. It's not been a particularly difficult addition just yet. Alaphilippe still on the front for a quick step. I cannot believe they raced this man as a domestique at this race. So frustrating on PCM. But yeah, no move so far. And uh, 100 riders plus still in the peloton. Oh, we've had a crash. We've had a crash. It was Encorn and Rosen. I thought we might have had Wout van Aert go down. But we have just conquered the Kapelmoor for the first time. You can see it's exploded the group. We have 14 riders here. Van der Poel is here. Vermeer is here. We have Nars and Van Aert. Sagan isn't here though. And there's plenty of other favourites who are caught pines. The group has ballooned up to about 40 riders again. But it's been a very selective race. Suddenly we've had an explosion on that ascent of the Kapelmoor. I think we're going to try and press on here. We do need to grab some water. Today. I mean, little Tom Pidcock is behind, Shackman is behind, Christoph. There are so many riders who could have competed for victory. A former winner, Alberto Bessiel, he is behind already as well. Pressing on again, 68k to go. We're controlling the Ronda right now. This is so cool to see a pro team on the front attacking the race. Here we go then, approaching the Odoquama for a second time. We have just had a few attacks. I think though, we still have the original breakaway only at the front of the race. Wrestle is done. Tilla is done as well. And Anders Garza leads the peloton onto the Odoquama. And here comes Wout van Aert. Here comes Wout van Aert. Absolutely cruising right now. Are we going to have to unleash Marcus already. I don't really want to. Let's put him up to maybe 88 just to make sure we stay in touch with Van der Poel and Van Aert who have cruised up that climb like I said and we are back in touch. That's perfect. And we have 20 riders at the front of the race. Trenton, Stebar, they are caught behind. I'm pretty sure they will come back on. Onto the Passberg we go. And we are really attacking this race right now. I'm absolutely loving it. I don't know if you guys can tell. Let's press over the top with Magnus Court Nielsen and see who can follow. Let's hopefully see the carnage we're creating behind us. GVA is here and these guys are really struggling to keep in touch. As you can see, we have stretched everything out. So we have 11 riders at the front. I think after that, I'm pretty sure some of these guys again will come back on, but the energy they have to spend to do this is absurd. We have 10 riders at the front of the Ronda and attacks from Hofstetter and Van Bala. Oh, and look at this. Van Aert and Van Bala have gone. I'm trying to follow with Magnus Court Nielsen. To be honest, he doesn't quite have the cobble ability to follow those guys. I don't want to spend all the guard just yet though. I'd rather try and relay with the likes of Stuyven and Van Der Poel on my wheel just so Hallegaard can conserve that little bit extra at this stage of the race. 40k to go and the race is absolutely everywhere. So this is the last we will see of Magnus Court Nielsen at the Ronda at the front of the race I believe and there we go. There we go. Hallegaard is back to the front. Nine riders are here. Our job is to follow every single attack right now. And I've actually failed to do that. You can see we do have Dylan Van Baal just up the road about 20 seconds. I'd rather be in this second group on the road though and you know what? I think we can swap these guys around. Let's put Hulagard on the back of the group. Magnus Court can do the relaying for him instead. And we need to try and conserve a little bit ahead of the final ascent of the Odequalmont and the Passerberg. Here we go then onto the Kreuzberg. We have attacks. Van Marker to G are trying to follow. Van der Poel is still in the group behind. There goes Magnus Court Nielsen. He is now done for the day. We need to make sure we're at least following Van der Poel's TS Benut. It's also cracked for the day as well. Let's sit up. Can't really follow Matthew Van der Poel. I'm going to choose not to follow that. I'm going to choose not to follow that. I'd rather relay in this group behind with Marcus Hulegaard. We have Van Marker, Van Aert. We can work with these guys, the other favourites, as Van Der Poel is spending everything trying to build the leads. Oh, and I missed it. Wout Van Aert is on the attack. Let's sit in and follow Seth Van Marker. That should be okay, I believe. We have a top eight guaranteed, and that attack from Wout Van Aert is going to be crucial because it closes the gap to Matthew Van Der Poel. And also, Wout Van Aert is pretty spent right now too. So let's come to the front of the race. Wout Van Aert continues over the top as we head onto the Eau de Let's go up to 87. This is going to be a crucial phase of the race. And so Marcus is working at about 87 right now. Let's drop this to 80. I'm not sure we can catch Wout Van Aert by ourselves. Let's see if we can drop anyone else in this group. Can I maybe attack up to Wout Van Aert? Let's try a little one with Marcus Hulegaard. It seems everyone is able to follow. We have seven riders still at the front of the race as Seneschal. He is gone for the day and quick step have no one left at the front. Let's try and come to the front of the group. They're ahead of the Passerberg. Oh, and here goes Wout Van Aert. Here goes Wout Van Aert entering the foot of the Passerberg. And this is not ideal because I'm going to be so far to the back of the group entering the climb. Let's come to the right-hand side. Take the inside of the corner. And that worked quite well, actually. Let's try and get to Wout's wheel 
if we can. Jasper Stuyvens will have to do. Come on, let's survive over the top and then we maybe have a chance as Stuyven cannot follow. Stuyven cannot follow Wout van Aert. Let's take the wheel of Matthew Van Der Poel. We are pretty cooked as well, but it looks like we're going to have to work with this group behind if we can stay here. Oh, and we can't hold the wheel. We cannot hold the wheel. Matthew Van Der Poel is gone. Terji is gone. And I think the podium places are now gone. We're going to have to sit on this group for a little bit. Stuyven van Marker and Dylan van Bala. And look at... Wout van Aert. He is just different level, guys. We have the plus five today. We are going to catch Terji and Van Der Poel, so hopefully a podium is doable, but Wout van Aert looks to be soloing to victory. So you know what? Wout van Aert is only 10 seconds up the road. This race is not over just yet. Let's try and maybe play some games here. We're Uno X. We're not the favourite in this group. Marcus Hulegaard, look at the riders he is around. Let's try and play some games. Follow the wheels. We're not going to work. We will settle for this position if they attack us. Let's pop that gel. 3k to go. Is Wout van Aert going to lose this race? I think he is, you know. As Seth van Marker is on the attack and he has caught him. I'm following Matthew Van Der Poel and we are staying here. So De Ronda is going to come down to a seven rider sprint. I'm following Matthew Van Der Poel with Marcus Hulegaard. Do I go for the jump? Look at that acceleration by Matthew Van Der Poel. Surely we cannot match it. It doesn't seem so. Nowhere near. Oh my word. Wout van Aert almost took it nonetheless and Jasper Sturven is going to win the Ronda ahead of Terji. We finished top five but so good to be competing with these massive massive riders in the world of cycling. Well 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 Marcus Hulgaard in the top five competing for victory in that sprint in the Ronda. Who would have thought it and who would have thought to be fair Stuyven beating Terji, Wout van Aert and Matthew Van Der Poel in that final sprint. That 83 acceleration, by the way, probably made Matthew Van Der Poel the wrong wheel for us to follow. Nonetheless, though, really happy with our performance. Let's take a quick look at the rankings, though, before heading off for the day. Magnus Court Nielsen is still in the top 10 in Super Prestige. You can see Hulegaard now into the top 31 riders after his result there at, uh, at the Ronda. In the Super Prestige, we're still fourth place. Only quick step, Yumbo and Ineos are ahead of us. That, to me, is just mind-blowing. Surely we are worthy of a World Tour license next season. But guys, that will actually round up for today's episode. Fairly short one. I do apologise for that. I wanted to focus on Deronda. And also, I am actually on holiday at the time of watching it. I'm not on holiday now, but when you watch it, I will be. Kind of a, a mind-blowing thing right there, I know. Anyway, for that, I wanted to get some videos prepared beforehand. I wouldn't have been able to add any more races. I simply would have run out of time. In the next one, though, we will be taking on the likes of it, Zulia, Basque Country Tour, Shell de Priest, and I think we'll leave Paris Bay for the following episode. We'll see about that, though, but some very, very fun races to come. But if you enjoyed, drop a like on the video, drop sub if you're new to the channel as well. Let me know what you thought in the comments below and I will see you guys in the next one.